Welcome back to the Oscar Pistorius trial at Carte Blanche Channel. As we went into the break, we were talking about the nature of cross-examination, what it is that Barry Rue is doing, what he seeks to achieve, what it is that Harry Nell is doing as well, because I think to a large extent we want to try and debunk some myths that are quite prevalent in social media about their roles, that for some reason Harry Nell is a puppy and uh, Barry Rue is a bully. We want to try and get, put a proper perspective on these things. And David, you had some thoughts about Well, the... just one thing to say, which is that different people people have very different styles of cross-examination. Sometimes you get quite aggressive cross-examiners, others are very, very quiet and simple but often can be extremely effective with a different style. So everyone has their own style and there's no rule as to what is the right way of doing this. Just on repeated questions, it, there, is a, there is a line. Um, plainly a cross-examiner is entitled to come back to an issue, to approach it from a different angle, to see if it elicits a different response. What is often fairly unhelpful though is to keep asking the same question over and over again because of course if a witness is of a clear mind and they keep saying it again and you don't move the witness in any way it makes it worse you simply emphasize the very point which has already come out so it's it's all a question of balance and style and where you're trying to go with repeated questions it has its risks and it has its rewards let's get, turn our attention now to the evidence that we had from the former station uh, commander at the Bosch Corp police station that's Colonel Scooby von Rendsburg and he was going through a sequence of photographs and really just explaining what it was. It was done in a, an almost an understated manner which belied be, be, be the, the graphic content of, the, uh, of those photographs. What is the value, James, of those photographs? Uh, well, I think it's, it's, it's threefold. I think it gives um, an overview of the layout of the house, the, the way things appeared at the scene at the time. And obviously that will give the court a good indication of the events as they transpired, as they were found after the fact. Um, and then obviously you're just adducing each of those photographs into evidence, then will uh, somehow, <laughs> at some future time, uh, influence the court on, on what it was that actually transpired, having seen those photographs and having the, um, the investigating officer or the person who arrived on the scene at the time walk the court through what he saw as he as he saw them, basically. Well, I suppose we, because we've had a good idea of Oscar Pistorius's defense, haven't we, both through the bail application and the plea explanation, Helen? So I found myself looking at these photographs, looking to see if it was a blow for Pistorius's version or would aid his version. And I suppose that is something that would be on everybody's mind as we watch these. It's not explained in those terms, is it? But ultimately it's going to go to that, isn't it? No, definitely. Um, because um, it's still early days um, to tell because um, you recall that um, the rule will, will allow when the state has closed its case for Mr. Pichotas to come in, yes. to come and tell us what had happened on that day. So basically, um, the photos are exhibits that are being shown to the court what had happened on that day and the, what Mr. Nell is doing, he's taking the witness through the layout of the house to say what was positioned, what was found, um, especially the bathroom because that is a crucial place of this matter. Yes. Yes. So you recall that um, a cell phone was found and I think there was a cartridge. There were cartridges yes, they indeed, specifically yeah. pointed out. Am indeed. I reading too much mm -hmm. into this, David, when I look at the way Kerry Nell is taking the witness through these things and he mm -hmm. says there's a cartridge there, there's the close-up of the cartridge. Mm -hmm. I see he's emphasizing that. He's emphasizing certain things. Mm -hmm. Do I draw an inference that later I'm going to hear more about the placement of these things? Tell me about the value of the photographic evidence for the state. Well, look, it's obviously essential to situate uh, what was found on the scene and all the different component parts of what was found there. The significance of this all will be picked up as the trial proceeds. But um, as Helen is saying, for example, the, the, the fact that there is a cell phone there yes. uh, is plainly going to be something that is likely to be built upon by the state and its significance will become clearer as we go on. So at the moment it appears to be a pretty dispassionate account of what was found there and we will see how much of that is actually put in issue uh, by uh, Barry Rue for, for, uh, for the defendant. Let's wait to see. Yeah. Exactly, we have to wait to see, but I, I can't help but think, Chris, as I, I watch this unfold, how do you cross-examine this? They photographs, and it's a man describing what he sees in the photograph. It seems pretty objective stuff. Well, just to go back a bit, I think photographs are totally unavoidable. And I won't be at all surprised if the court doesn't conduct an inspection in loco, because the photographs are a visual representation of the scene, of what the witnesses are talking about, it's, it's uh, visual representation is very powerful. 
uh, for the court to internalize the realities of the situation. And to answer your question, uh, can you just repeat it? Uh, Cross-examining something like this, how do you cast doubt if you I, I, want to cast doubt on a photograph? Where did, it's, that's the bathroom. No, you won't be able to cast doubt on any photograph unless he's going to follow through, uh, rather surprisingly, uh, with an allegation of um, manufacturing evidence. Yes. Uh, he, he put that allegation to, was it David Fisco? The person who was in the car with Frosco. Yes, that's I, right. I doubt that that will be put to the state. I think what he'll do is to, uh, as my uh, esteemed colleague has said already, is to visit these aspects of, of the scene with the interpretation that the defense wants to put on it. I suppose it's also important, isn't it, James, to have a look at the, the photographs to, to try and ascertain if, if there's anything untoward, if, if, if something got tampered with. You can have a look at it immediately after the crime had taken place and what happened when it was taken in for forensic testing. Well, that, that's already, I think it was already taken issue at the bail application that there was um, certain uh, dodgy dealings that with the scene right then and there um, and that the, the scene wasn't correctly handled. I think that that's also where Barry Rue may or may not go at some stage in the future. Um, and I think also that the, the aspect of the photographs, perhaps he might pick up not necessarily but what was was photographed but what was not yeah. uh, what aspects of the scene have been left out from the state's case because obviously f uh, through the line of his cross-examination is the fact that the state is trying to um, create a, a artificial scene as it were um, and that's perhaps what he might like to pick up at a later stage to say well you've taken these photographs but what about other aspects of the scene that have not been brought into issue well I'm, I'm predicting that the headlines tomorrow are going to be the bathroom window was open because obviously Barry Rue, for his version to work, or Oscar Pistorius' version to work, part of it means the bathroom window has to be closed. He made that very, very clear when he was interviewing the witnesses who spoke about the screams. The photographs show the bathroom window is open. Mm -hmm. uh, how much of a blow is this now for Oscar Pistorius? Well, clearly one of the things that will be intensively considered is uh, uh, who came on to that crime scene and at what point, and could there be other explanations as to why that window is open. So the integrity of the scene, who was there when, and what might they have done uh, at any point in time before those photographs was taken, I think is likely to emerge as an important line of inquiry. Uh, uh, presumably, Barry Rue will then try and create other, or put it to the witnesses that there are other explanations for that window being open? Well, it's always extremely regrettable if the crime scene has been messed up mm. uh, because um, it, it means that the state case is no longer credible. And it also gives, allows the defense uh, the facility of, uh, for that very reason, that the state case is not credible and the represent, representation of the scene is not correct, it allows the defense to then uh, claim a different set of uh, facts to fit that scene. What I, I find interesting as well when it comes to the way in which this is done, it's done in, in this dispassionate way, yet there'll be this rather dramatic moment where we realize actually the bathroom window is open. There's a sense from the public that this is a, a sucker punch to the defense, but it's not ever delivered like that. At what stage then will all this evidence be put together and presented to the judge for the judge to make a decision they don't have to trumpet and say you see my lady the window is open that negates they don't it's not yeah. done like that in court is it yeah. mm -hmm. when does it all get put in the box the ribbons tied on it and given to the judge. I think the thing, David, I think everybody in, in the public is kind of expecting this uh, Ali McBeal moment. That's right. You know, and, and unfortunately that doesn't happen. Well, fortunately that doesn't happen because at the end of, at the, end of the trial, that's when the judge makes the assessment of all of the evidence as it's been presented. Not like just the bathroom window was open and therefore you know, that we were going to convict him and send him to jail for a thousand years. So at the end of the day, the judge has to then, for lack of a better word, cherry pick all the best aspects of the evidence, either it being good or bad for, for the case, and then make, a, a, for lack of a better word, an informed decision mm. on whether or not all of these aspects have been proved or not proved. Chris? I think what's important is that we need to understand that both sides, State Council and Defence Council, at every stage are reassessing the situation in the light of the strength of their case as it unfolds. So here in L, at the end of this trial, will probably be at a different uh, 
position to argue yes. than the one that he started off with. He might even be in a position whereby he has to concede that most of what he's tried to prove has failed, but he still has a case. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those cases where the state is in a good position. They can lose many, many of these battles without actually losing the war. That's my um, respectful opinion. Your considered view. Well, we'll continue this discussion. We will have a look at some of the issues that have been raised on social media. I've actually asked the panel as well to think about those issues that they are hearing about through colleagues, lay people, social media themselves, things that they want to address and debunk possibly to try and explain or make this criminal uh, process a lot more understandable. That's all up after the break.